objects, you know, this could be the thing that really, you know, takes over, you know, uh, at least in my opinion, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, it harkens me back to the, you know, the early days of the web when you would literally just hook up a couple computers and you can share resources among each other. Um, or like if <laughs> kind of, for me, it kind of reminds me of like when you have Latin parties, things like that. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of like the idea of this whole thing, uh, for uh, the limitations, I mean. Um, so the next thing, uh, so yeah, so launching a site, you need to publish it with the DAP protocol. And over here, I have, um, I'm going to go ahead and switch here. So here, we have the documentation. Um, let me zoom in a bit. Here's the documentation from the, the Beaker browser showing you how to basically publish a peer-to-peer -peer website. So, so again, um, it says you're ready to create your first website. Already have a website that you want to publish on the peer-to-peer -peer web? This guide is for you. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, anyways, so publish a website with Beaker. So again, the Beaker browser, um, and uh, I'll go ahead and open it up in a little bit. Um, the Beaker browser basically allows you to publish a site uh, to the peer-to-peer -peer web very easily on the DAP protocol. Um, so obviously here, you open the Beaker browser, the main menu, create new, so you create new. If you already built a website, click from folder, import that folder that contains your website. Obviously, so obviously if, if you already have a folder built, you know, obviously import it from the folder. Um, you can also import an empty project, so where you can actually start, you know, creating your project then. Um, so it's here. Otherwise, click the website, use Beaker, uh, Beaker's basic website template, or click empty project to start from scratch. Beaker will automatically create a new DAT website that you can edit using Beaker, Beaker's built-in uh, editor or your per preferred text editor. Um, so that's the way to do it on the Beaker browser. It's literally just a you know, one to three steps, uh, very simple. Um, and again, we're gonna go ahead and go go through that process in a little bit. So that's literally how easy it is where you can start uh, launch a website on the Peter Peer web. And this is, uh, you know, this is kind of like what I was uh, referring to earlier where like they're kind of combined different ideas into one. So like, let's say I needed to share a zip file with someone. This is like literally the same process I would have to do to share that that, that one zip file with someone. And that's why it's kind of like, you know, it's just not, uh, you know, you know, obviously here they call it a project uh, or from folder. So, and it says create new. And it doesn't refer to the whole idea of, uh, oh, create new website or create new, upload new file. Um, so, I mean, they do have the share file um, little uh, tab there. But, you know, it's just kind of like one of those things. Again, it's just not very intuitive, I guess, for new people. Um, if you're a little bit more tech savvy, obviously it's going to be a little bit more easier for you. But um, I guess for new users, it might be a little bit of more of a bigger hurdle. But, you know, again, it's maybe it's just one of those things like maybe it can be solved easily through um, a UX UI kind of thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a technical solution. It just has to be a more visual uh, solution. So, yeah, so that's that's basically doing this basically then gets you a, a dat URL. And that dat URL is basically what you need just to start browsing your site on the peer-to-peer -peer web. So over here it also tells you how to publish a website with the DAT CLI. So obviously you can install DAT on the command line and you can use it through the command line as well. Um, that's very handy if you have it on a server somewhere and you want to run it on your server or if you have a specific computer, like a little home server somewhere kind of idea. Um, so, that, so that's how that works too. Um, so once you, um, once you publish that protocol, then um, as it says here, set up a hash page to super peer your website. So yeah, so once once you do this process here, um, publishing a peer to peer website, and you have that URL, the dat URL. Once you have that, you're good to go on the peer to peer web. But let's say you wanted just to basically share that to other people as well on the you know HTTP protocol. So the way you would do that, or or like let's say you turn off your computer as well. Um, once you turn off your computer, that resource is no longer being shared. Um, so um, obviously, how do you get around that problem? Um, well, the first problem, like obviously, how do you share that to someone on the traditional, I mean, uh, on the HTTP, HTTP protocol? How do you share that to someone um, easily? So the answer is hash page. 
Um, here, um, Hashbase is actually uh, developed and run, and um, it's it's by the same people who do the Beaker browser. So it's kind of like these two projects are basically um, go hand in hand. So about Hashbase, Hashbase is a public peer uh, for files published with the DAP protocol. We keep your files online while your computer is off. So there you go. That solves that problem. So you turn off your computer, your files are still online because they're being hosted on Hashbase. DAT is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol for sharing data sets and files. When you use DAT, your files are distributed across the network of peers who have shared your files. So again, like uh, when I spoke about earlier over here with the same same image, um, even if your resources are being uh, shared here uh, this at this computer um, and you turn off this computer, uh, obviously this person won't be able to reach your resources. But let's say that this person does have that same file here and they're trying to reach it to you, but this person just needs to go to that person and that, that problem is solved. So that kind of like how it works. So imagine that this computer is hash based. That computer is now hash based. This is me and this is uh, you. And you're trying to reach those files that um, you know I put up on uh, at some time ago and you can't reach me because my computer's off. Well, you'll be able to reach it on hash base because they're hosting my files. So that's what hash base basically does. And on top of that, they're, they host my files to everyone else on the network. So, uh, so that's kind of like how that works. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, not, nothing too complicated there. So it says here, why you use hash base, reliability and discover and discovery. Publishing with that means that peers will contribute bandwidth, but only if they're online and sharing your files. If nobody's hosting your files, then they won't be accessible. That's where hash base comes in. We act as a super peer that makes your content always available. So there you go. That's that's how that's the idea. So it's kind of like a, it's basically a hosting company. <laughs> so you can host your sites on there. Um, but obviously there is some limitations and we'll, uh, I'll get to them in a, uh, in a little bit right now. So obviously the feature is reliable rehosting. Hashbase acts as a super peer re and rehosts your data archives. So your files are always available when even when you're offline. Archive history backup. Uh, DAT maintains a log of all the changes you make to your archive files. In addition to storing your archive files, we store a backup of the entire history log. So that's very helpful. So like, let's say I am sharing that zip file for you and, um, Again, someone like, you know, intercepts it in the middle, like there's a man in the middle attack there and someone intercepts that uh, zip file. And obviously they change the content. Obviously when they do that and try to republish it, the, the signature is going to be different and you can see the, the, the logs are different. So that's a security little, uh, uh, you know, plus um, that you can achieve when you do it this, this method. Uh, HTTPS mirroring. In addition to rehosting your files on the DAT peer peer to network, we mirror the content to the on the web so that you can share it with anyone. So there you go. So if you're trying to share your your files on you know the HTTP protocol, you can do it through Hashbase. Um, and obviously, they offer you DNS short names. Pick a custom short name for each of your archives, like catsarecute.alice-hashbase.io. So you can have that. You know, obviously. You know, and we'll see right now. The DAT URLs are like super long and complicated, jumble mess of letters and numbers, and no one in their right mind is gonna bother try to memorize. And if you, even if you do memorize it, uh, you know, and you try to share it with someone, no one else is gonna memorize it for you. So uh, the idea is that you know you upload your files to Hashbase, and then you can have them. You can give it a DNS sh DNS short name, um, but. The limitation here is that you can't hook up this this um, you know this DNS short name, uh, this record here. You can't hook it up to your domain. So let's let's say that you do have a .com or a .net somewhere, and you just basically want to forward that you know traffic from your .com to this DNS short name. You can't really do that. I mean, you can obviously just do a simple um, uh, rewrite rule, and it will take you to it. But um, you can't set it up uh, as a C name record or an A name record. You can't do that right now. Um, so that's kind of like a quick little limitation. You're always going to have to share this specific uh, uh, URL. Um, and you can't really uh, basically um, set it up on your own domain yet. Yet. Um, there is some plans to do that. And again, these are, this is the team. This is the same two people who work on the DAP project. I mean, the, the, the Beaker browser. So that's kind of cool. So, oh, let me show you real quick the pricing. So you get 100 megabytes for free. 
and the pro plan is 10 gigabytes for seven bucks a month um, obviously they just started off this, uh, this this project so obviously the storage is a little limited for now uh, but obviously once they start getting you know uh, bigger obviously they're gonna, they're gonna ramp up on the, on the uh, size of storage and whatnot and, but really and on top of that like actually you know if you really think about it like um you know there's only certain cases where you might uh need more than 10 gigabytes because if you're if you're going to be sharing like let's say 100 gigabytes um traditionally you would just like have it on a home server somewhere you know or have it on your own vps elsewhere and then share it through you know the dat protocol through there um so actually this is very 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 reasonable um you know this again this is kind of like just for show, sharing quick files things like that and so you know 10 gigabytes nowadays seems like very uh, limited but if you think about it when it, you're doing it on the peer-to-peer -peer web it actually when you're doing it that way it's actually quite a bit it's actually quite a bit of files that you can uh you know share through hashbase and even if you do reach that limitation of 10 gigabytes through hashbase uh, just leave your computer on, build a home server, and share the other, you know, one terabyte of files that you want to share too. <laughs> um, same idea with BitTorrent. Like, if you had a lot of torrents that you want to share with people, then you just kept your, your computer on, right? <laughs> same idea. Same idea. So okay. Um, so uh, again, so let's get back over here to the notes. Um, set up a hash base. Uh, to super uh, superior website so yeah that, that's the idea of um of using hash page for that um so here it shows how to get dns working so you need to set up uh, txt files to point to your data address so over here i have the guide that shows you how to do that so obviously on the beaker browser they show you again uh how to use the domain with dat so here um it says by default that uh that uh, websites are addressed with a 64 character URL. For example, here's a raw DAT for URL for dat, uh, beakerbrowser.com. And you see, this is what I was talking about. It's 64 characters long and made of letters and numbers. No one in their right mind is gonna you know, memorize that. Um, and again, even if you do, no one is gonna memorize it for you. So if you try to give it to someone else, they're not gonna memorize it. So obviously you need to set up some kind of domain or some kind of DNS short name. So that's what Hashbase figured out. You know, that's why they do this whole DNS short name for you because you know, they know that no one's going to memorize a 64 character URL. <laughs> um, so that's why they do that. Um, because raw URLs from the DAT protocol are like, yeah, no, no one's going to remember that. So, so yeah, a raw URL is similar to the ways, uh, uh, ways to an IP address. Uses different identifier points to the website, difficult to remember. Most of the time it's prefer for preferable to reference with a domain name. So obviously like, you know, even if, um, even today, like if you set up a server somewhere, for those of us who work on uh, building websites for, for clients and you share them, you share with them an IP address, you know, they're, they're not going to remember that IP address. I mean, I don't even remember the IP address half the time. Um, so obviously setting up a, a, a domain or some kind of like, um, you know, what was it called? Um, uh, C name, uh, uh, C name forwarding, you know, something like that. Uh, Cause I know like, um, one of the hosting providers that I use is, um, WP engine and they use, uh, C names, uh, you know, whenever you set up a server, they set up a C name for you. They don't, they give you the IP address and then they set up a C name for you. You know, so like if it's, um, you know, for example, my website, um, dot com, they would set up a, uh, my website dot WP dot com for you as a C name. And you can set that up on your DNS provider so that traffic starts flowing to that, um, using the C name as opposed to using the IP address. Now, the benefit of that is uh that if the ip address ever changes at the server because you know these hosting companies every now and then they have to change the ip address because a server goes down and they transfer resources to a different server or whatever and your ip address changes and if you set it up on an a record and your ip address changes well your traffic's no longer going to flow <laughs> but they solve that using a c name record so c name forwarding uh flattening that's what it's called c name flattening uh so you basically you basically 
set your a, a basic DNS record uh, on on to your server so that whenever you know uh, your IP address changes, it goes just specifically to the server uh, that 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 record is stored on, and not necessarily the IP address. So that's kind of like the idea of uh, CNAME flattening. I mean, that's a quick little aside, but um, you know that's kind of like the idea of what Hashbase is doing a little bit. Um, but you can't use that record yet on your DNS. Um, but uh, here, it says here, going back to what we were discussing, uh, domain names and DAT. There are a couple of ways to use your domain with a DAT website. If you want to use your domain with DAT, but don't care about republishing your website on HTTPS, jump to DAT DNS uh, text records. Um, if you want to use your domain with DAT and also want to mirror the content on the HTTPS, jump to the DAT well-known slash DAT. So there's basically two two methods. Um, the method where like you don't care if it's being hosted on HTTP protocol, and the method if you do care about being hosted on the, the HTTP protocol. Now I kind of found a I kind of found a little bit of a third method um, that they don't quite dis- they don't discuss it here, but uh, I you know just through experimentation I found it, and it's not necessarily that I found it. It's kind of like other people have done it. And I just kind of like hacked it, hacked it together. I kind of like just put it together. I didn't really um, necessarily follow the, the rules here. So the method I did, and I'll show you right now, the method I did uh, for that web, that one website that I was discussing earlier that, that I was testing this on is I did this method, the dat, uh, DNS text records. So obviously when I set up my, my dat URL, I uh, set up these two records, the you know the regular all around record and the WW subdomain uh, record. So, so excuse me, I want to take a sip of my coffee. So yes, um, so I set up these two records on my um, my my D um, my DNS providers, which is uh, I'm currently using. Uh, well, one of them that I the one I used it for this. Uh, I set it up on uh, Cloudflare, and um, the the thing you have to kind of like uh, kind of keep in mind is that Cloudflare, if you're using their service, like their Cloudflare service, um, you, know, you have to be a little careful as to like um, not careful. You just have to be mindful, like making sure if, if you have an SSL certificate uh, with all this setup with this whole DAT protocol stuff like that, make sure you turn off uh, the DAT uh, the Cloudflare. Uh, um, proxy service because again it's going to interfere with your SSL certificate and it's going to not you know work so that's a little that's a quick little aside for that so that that's basically what I did I set up my my DNS records to point to my server my you know my traditional a records uh, to point to uh, the server I set it up on and excuse me guys uh, um we have to set up these two records with your DNS, and I set I set up my. Uh, I'll show you right now to the to the website that I launched, the test website that I did. Um, so I, I had a little trouble because that website's you know it's it's the way I did it is you know it's a little weird. Uh, I was testing out a lot of things and I wasn't sure if none of them were going to work, and I got it to work after a while. Um, but yeah. So the main idea here is that you want to make sure that you set up your records in this exact format. So a dat key equals and then your dat URL. Um, I had a little issue when I did not set it up like this. I forgot to uh, the add the equal sign, and <laughs> and yeah, it just wasn't working. So uh, that's just a little uh, little thing that you have to remember. And obviously, the, the second method uh, that they describe here is using the dot well known slash dat. Now, those of you who work on websites. You know, you may you may already know the whole dot well known uh, folder on your on your server. You may know exactly what it's for. Um, so same idea here is that you upload a file in that folder, and you basically add these this little uh, you know you add this little text uh, in there. Uh, so that and then your your dot key and then the time to live. So you add that in there, and basically um, you add that on the root, obviously, of your of your server, and you're good to go. Um, and then there's another little technique that they offer here. Um, if you use uh, this technique, they recommend to use a tool, a tool like uh, Homebase to manage your website. Um, you know, that, well, probably I'm not going to cover that in this live stream today, but um, 
yeah, they, they do discuss uh, uh, this you know thing called home base. And basically what home base is, it's kind of like a small little server application that you put on your server that you have uh, on the you know traditional uh, web. And uh, basically what it does is that it reads a certain directory or it reads your whatever directory you tell it to. And it reads it and basically it uh, anytime you ch make changes to your your files, it basically you know updates uh, your DAT and then basically republishes it again to the DAT uh, um, protocol. Um, we're not going to really worry about that today, um, mainly because you know this site that I'm going to be uh, uh, launching right now, it's it's a very basic site. Uh, you know, if if if, an, uh, if I do make changes to it, it's going to be relatively easy for me to make the changes. Uh, on both um, so I don't need necessarily to set up something that automatically does it for me so but that that is an option that you have um, so the, the thing that we're gonna be doing today is obviously adding these two records uh, to that um, so that's basically um, the things that you have to kind of keep in mind so uh, obviously publish it with that protocol uh, set up hash page to super peer it and then set up the DNS uh, records so let me show you real quick the site that I had launched. Um, this site here, tacosandlinux.com. Uh, this is the site that uh, I basically, you know, launched on, um, on, uh, on. You know, I, I have it. Obviously, it's on the HTTP protocol, and then on top of that, I have it on the DAT protocol as well. Um, so right now, you're seeing it on. You know the traditional HTTP protocol. If you if you're curious of how I, I launched this site, I did it on uh, using Keybase. Um, uh, you know it, it it's a little slow, I guess. Um, but uh, oh crap! I still have it on the camera. Eh, time. There we go. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, Right now, I currently, um, like I said, uh, uh, yeah, so here we go. Now we're seeing it. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, so um, this right now is being hosted on the, the HTTP protocol via Keybase. Um, and Keybase, is, it's kind of like a, it's a little, it's a little saying that uh, you can host up some files on there. It gives you uh, public encryption, kind of stuff like that. Uh, anyways, but so I have this site up there on there right now. And you know it's just a very basic site. You know nothing fancy about it. Very plain Jane kind of site. Um, and I just did it for uh, you know a page that I kind of created uh, called Tacos and Linux. Uh, so it's, uh, obviously, as you can see here on the URL, I mean I don't know if you can see it really, but obviously up here it says www.tacosandlinux.com, secure connection with SSL. So obviously you know this is being served up on the you know, HTTP. So as you can see, this this it's there on the traditional web. Um, but uh, if we instead of using HTTP, we do dat, and then we do tacosandlinux.com. Now I'm using Firefox right now. Firefox does not uh, read dat uh, URLs yet, but um, I have it obviously set up on my computer that whenever I put in a dat URL, it will open up the Beaker browser automatically. So once we do this, we enter, um, it should open up the, the Beaker browser, hopefully. Oh, there it goes. And it's opening up it over here, and you see, boom. So now, what you're seeing is basically no different from what you're seeing on Firefox. Um, well, the only slight difference is that the emojis don't work on the Beaker browser yet. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's if it's uh, specifically to Beaker browser or on my system, um, but obviously, obviously emojis are working over here, so I, I'm guessing it's Beaker browser. Um, that's really the only difference. Um, but yeah, like links work. So if I were to click on this link, it'll take me to the Instagram for Tacos and Linux. So yeah, there you go. You see, everything basically works, um, and it. As you can see, um, it'll take you to um, both HTTP and DAT uh, URLs. So here, I'm obviously on the DAT protocol, um, and over here, I'm using HTTP. So you can use either website really. Um, so over here, I kind of show you. Let me show you guys real quick. Um, let me see if I can zoom. I can't zoom. 
So over here, if I click on over here on the URL bar, it's showing me, uh, I know it's kind of small guys, sorry, I apologize that, about that, but it says here, it, it gives me basically a, um, um, a, uh, the path to the, my local directory uh, that has that's hosting these files currently. So if I um, if I click on it on the little yellow bar here and I click open folder, it's gonna open um, basically. Uh, let me click on it so you can see. It's gonna open you know uh, my my file browser and it's gonna open up those files. So these are the files that are currently making up this website. Obviously, um, if I click configure. It's going to take me to this little thing. So here, what we're seeing now is kind of like the back end um, settings page, I guess you could call it or something like that. Um, and here, obviously, I can change all the settings for my DAT uh, uh, hosted website. You can see who is currently hosting uh, or who is peering my site uh, via the network. And on top of that, you can see which files uh, are being currently um, hosted uh uh, on, on my local machine here. So these files obviously are the same as here. So all these files here, except for the directory one. Obviously the directory one is, is a local one that KDE does to your file browser in Dolphin. So um, that, that's just, that's not being served up or anything. Um, and another thing that you can see here is that if you click here where it says uh, dat, and again, I apologize if it's kind of small, um, it'll take you to the actual dat URL for that. So the 64 character long URL. Um, if you click this little thing here, you can share this, uh, share it with, uh, anyone with this link can view this, uh, this project files. So obviously you can share this. This is basically how you would share a file, um, via the dat protocol. So if you did just upload a single file in here, you would just copy this link and share it with someone and they'll open it in a beaker browser and they'll have access to that file. Um, so that's basically how it works. Um, so also this is little, the little bit of uh, uh, information that you'll need to set up those text records and to be able to uh, basically um, add that to your DNS in a little bit, which we'll go ahead and do now. So then, so yeah, so you see, um, you can set up uh, traditional domains uh, to basically route traffic to not only you know, HTTP protocol, but through DAT protocol as well. And I can show you real quick, you know, if I try to open it here, HTTP, you know, uh, tacos and Linux, oh, excuse me. Oh, oopsie. Ah, what's going on? I misspelled it. Yeah, tacos and Linux, there you go. Uh, so you can see here, it's gonna, um, when I do it via the HTTP protocol, um, it's gonna recognize uh, that these files on, on the back end uh, have um, a dat URL because obviously my DNS is uh, telling the server, uh, my I mean my client, hey, like these are the, the records that I found for the server for this uh, specific site. Uh, which one do you want me to serve up? Do you want me to serve up the A record, the C name record, a text record? What do you want me to serve up? An MX record? What is it that you want to serve up? And the client says, hey, serve me up these these records. So obviously when you're in the Beaker browser, it asks, hey, do you have any uh, text records um, so I can read your, the DAT URL? And obviously the Beaker, uh, the Beaker browser asks that and then obviously the DNS provider says, yeah, here are the text records. So that's how it's able to recognize that it has a DAT URL. And if you he over here at the very uh, top right, uh, you can actually just click on, it says here, peer-to-peer -peer version available. If you just click on that, it'll literally just take you to the DAT version of that. So it'll change the URL for you and it'll just serve up the same site, obviously, because the sites are the same. Uh, but it'll take you again to the local version or the DAP version of your site. Um, to kind of show you how uh, Hashbase works, I'll have to go ahead and uh, tacos on Linux .hashbase .io. And there you go. You see, uh, with Hashbase, since I'm also hosting these files on there, um, it will... It will not only route you through the the HTTP protocol, but also route you through uh, the DAT protocol as well. So I can click it, uh, and it'll serve me up the local files, and it'll still keep the uh, DNS short name with .hashbase.io. And I can show you guys over here uh, under my profile under Hashbase. 
that my archives are here. So here I'm hosting tacosandlinux.hashbase.io and I can either serve it up via the, the web or the peer-to-peer. -peer. And um, if I click it, it'll show me here um, how to change my subdomain, um, uh, the links that I can share out to people so I can share them uh, the traditional DNS um, that uh, uh, URL or the raw URL or the HTTP URL. So there you go. So like even if, if you have some files that you want to share around people or if you have a website that you want to put up, you can just put it up on Hashbase and boom, you can start sharing it. Um, if a person doesn't have the Beaker browser installed and you know they still want access to that file, just share it through the traditional HTTP protocol. If they do have uh, that, uh, the Beaker browser installed and they want to uh, access it via there, share the that proto uh, protocol with them and everyone's happy basically. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started now. So let me go ahead and show you guys how to launch the actual site. So again, this is the site that I that I did, and let me show you the site for now. Uh, just a real simple site, um, nothing fancy. So let me just open it in the browser via. Oh crap! Excuse me, guys. So here we go. So this is the this is the site that I built. Again, nothing fancy, nothing nothing special about it. It's just something that I wanted to put up real quick. So that that's the site that I, that I'm currently be changing from this to this basically. Um, again, so I'm just gonna add like a little profile image of myself and basically keep the things and add a couple of little new links that I kind of have here. Um, so it's, we're gonna go from this to this and. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so obviously the first step when you're launching a new site is you have to upload your, your files to your VPS. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, I'm just gonna do it uh, off camera because um, uh, not that I don't trust any of you guys, but um, uh, I'm gonna be changing, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be logging into my site and I don't wanna be like accidentally showing passwords or anything like that, uh, which is a good, a good thing that y'all should also follow. You know, you, you don't want to be um, exposing passwords like that uh, in a live stream. I don't know if you guys <laughs> like watching those videos of those of people who are doing live streams and like weird stuff happens. Like, <laughs> like oh, like a, like a really good example is that that one where <laughs> that reporter was doing a, a, a report uh, and then uh, their kid starts walking in in the background like, ah, they're playing in the background. So, like that. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Um, but you know, other things have happened. You know, obviously we know the whole idea of swatting, so that's kind of scary. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, log into my site here, and uh, and then I'm gonna start uh, uploading those files, and I'll show you the changes. So here we go. Open that up, and then obviously we're gonna copy this. Uh, copy all those files. Copy. Uh oh. Here. Uh, what's it saying here? Okay. Overwrite that one. Okay, so it's uploading now. Um, so I'm I'm just using SFTP, you know, to upload the files over. Um, you know, many of you, of course, I'm using um, in. Uh, I'll show you right now once the files are all done uploading but uh for those of you who are not familiar how to upload files up to a server uh obviously you'd use a, pro a program that reads ftp um like probably the most popular one is uh filezilla so um filezilla you would use filezilla to upload your, your your files up there and um once once you get your files uh, basically set up on there uh your server will start you know serving them up right away um of course if you have all the configurations set up correctly and uh, of course, uh, it won't serve them up uh, with your DNS yet because obviously you have to set up that differently. But um, yeah, so once once you set those things up, um, all that kind of stuff should be working right away. Uh, so okay, that's served up now. So let me see if I can uh, let me see if I can get back to that IP. Uh, there we go. So I'm currently serving that up. Uh, 
and oh, something's not working. Oh, um, I think uh, oh, so I can show you guys real quick. I thought so. Uh, the profile image is not working. So let's figure out what's going on there. Some some quick. Uh, Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> I still hard coded. I hard coded the the path. <laughs> uh, 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 rookie mistake there. I, I hard coded the path of my image um, t from my local directory. So <laughs> let's let's find out uh, what it is. Uh, obviously, it's just not going to be media. I think it's just going to be up to media. There you go. Yeah. So let's go ahead and change that real quick. <laughs> so, but I mean, this is this is kind of the stuff that you do. You know, you troubleshoot when you, you know, th things like this are gonna happen every now and then, and you have to troubleshoot them. Um, so we can we can do this. I guess the easiest way is probably just to log back in and then open this up. Let's see, hopefully this works. I have not tried this. Uh, let's see here. I'm just trying to change that file right now. Change the. Just gonna change the path real quick. So here we go. Here's the code for it. Here we go. Obviously, we just need to change this to that. Save. Finished. Refresh. And there we go. It's working now. Perfect. So that was, that. there we go. See, that wasn't that difficult. That was pretty simple, straight, straightforward. Uh, so now, let's go ahead and fix our DNS. And this is going to be kind of cool, guys, because we're going to do it both on, um, excuse me, do it for both. I currently set up the domain, and boom, look at that. Working, beautiful. Is this connection not secure? Because obviously, I don't have a SSL on there. I will add one later, though. Um, so, yeah, that, that we have, now I have, I've, you know, basically launch my website on the traditional web, but I, now I need to launch it on the decentralized web. Let's create new from folder. Let's go to our projects folder. And then where is it? There it is. And obviously use this folder. And it's gonna open up a new um, uh, tab here. And in here, obviously we're gonna title this project. And the reason we have to title it, um, it's because obviously, uh, I don't know why I did that. Because this is going to be uh, served up on the uh, that protocol. So let me see. Just so I know that this is just not you know a named directory, but it's a specific directory for this. Um, so. Now we have my website is launched on the decentralized web. That's literally it. <laughs> it's now there. It's ready. Um, and how do I know that? It's because again we have this URL. So if we click the URL, boom! Look at that on the decentralized web. Dun dun dun. So obviously it's still giving us a 64 uh, character long URL. We can't use my domain uh, yet. And that's the next step. That's exactly what we're going to do now. So that's that's why we need. Uh, actually, the next step, actually, to the truth, um, is to take this that URL because we want to make sure. Again, we want to make sure that our site is always available on the decentralized web, uh, even if I turn off com my computer. Because if I turn off my computer right now, and you try to reach that that URL, um, you won't be able to um, because it's just not gonna work because that I'm not sharing that resource. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and go to Hashbase now. We're gonna share that URL and then we're gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna name it my name, obviously. 
Um, names like a saying, only characters, numbers, and dashes. So, okay, perfect. Let's just do a dash. Uh, oh, that's way too long. Let's just keep it like that. Uh, yeah, perfect. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, so now we have this and we got to just do create, add archive. I mean, uh, and boom, it's done. So now it's currently uploading it to Hashbase. Um, and the, it, the way it's doing it, it's not, it's not, um, it's not copying it from my local directory. It's basically uh, fetching it via the dat uh, protocol. So, you know, um, it's following this URL and then reading whatever's in there and then copying it from there. Um, obviously to some people, you may not want that because, you know, some files you want them to be read only and you can do that. You can, you can, um, you, you can set uh, certain files to be read only. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the interesting part of that. Um, uh, so there we go, this method. If you have a home server somewhere or if you're running on a Raspberry Pi and you have those files there, um, you know, that's fine. Just leave that little thing going 24-7 and people will be able to reach those files 24-7. Um, if you don't plan on doing that, then obviously, you know, doing it uh, with Hashbase saves you that effort that you don't have to keep a serve home server on uh 24 7 or if you do manage servers somewhere and you, you could do it just leave those servers on somewhere um so now we have we have um let me change campus so now we have two two things going on here one is that i uploaded my site to my vps and it's currently being served up there so i have my vps serving up my traditional HTTP protocol site and that's cool that's it that my site's launched right and then I went and launched my site via the DAP protocol with the Beaker browser and you guys saw how easy that was it's just like literally kind of like using that uh, FTP right it's kind of like you're just uploading files um, and then it gives you a specific uh, 64 character URL the DAP URL and then yeah, you can you can start visiting the the, the site on both the uh, HTTP protocol and the the that URL. So currently, what I have done though is I've only added my domain to my HTTP uh, server VPS server you know site, and so it can only travel to send traffic to that. Now I want it to be able to send traffic to my that uh, URL. So now again we have to go and I'll show you to the guide. We have to go and set up the text records under my DNS. So again, the reason why we needed uh, to first uh, upload uh, the site to to the dat URL is so that we can get that 64 character URL. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy this again, and we're going to go back over here. And I'm going to sh I'm going to it's going to be off camera because I need to update my records over here in the background. Um, so basically all I'm doing guys is, uh, this, this is literally all I'm going to do. I'm going to set up these two, um, let me back this up. There we go. Uh, I'm going to set up these two records, um, on my, on my, um, my, my uh, DNS provider over here, which is Cloudflare. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. You just, you know, I mean, all DNS records are pretty much straightforward, right? Um, they're not you know, that, uh, difficult to uh, work with. Um, they are difficult if you do forget, uh, how to set them up. Uh, I mean, how, uh, to set them up. So like, if you forget how to set up, a uh, an A raker, if you do forget to set up your A record, then your site's not going to work, right? <laughs> no matter how many times you refresh that page, the site, the traffic's not going to go to it. <laughs> Same thing with, if you're setting up an email, um, you know, if you set up email and you you forget to basically um, you, you forget to uh, <laughs> set up your records uh, with your DNS, uh, yeah, it's not gonna work. So you just have to make sure that you set up your records correctly, and yeah, and make sure it's all served up correctly. So now, currently, um, I have now set up the, those two records. Those two records are now set up for both the uh, all around one and the WP, w, w, the triple W uh, there. Those are now set up. 
let's see here. Let's see here. Okay, that one's set up. I'm just, I'm just making sure that, that everything's set up correctly. Because uh, again, last time I had a lot of issues because I forgot the, the equal sign and that was a big headache and it just ended up being an equal sign. <laughs> uh, so that, that was kind of funny. Uh, anyways, uh, so that's set up now. Those two records are set up now. And uh, okay, so now I'm just trying to make sure all the cameras and stuff are set up correctly, guys. Excuse me. So that, those two records are set up correctly at my uh, DNS provider. I also have my A records set up correctly. Um, what else do I have? I have my hash base set up. Um, so yeah, like I, like I was uh, mentioning earlier, guys. Um, you know, I can't necessarily. Um, I can't necessarily just start serving up uh, traffic via this uh, domain here because you know it, it doesn't quite work like that. I don't know why. I just they just haven't set up the technology for it yet. Um, so now if we go to this site and obviously this one here is set up on the HTTP So if I hit HTTP it should yeah refreshes it correctly So now if all worked correctly if I set up all my records correctly, I should just be able to enter that uh, And then the domain and again, this is in Firefox. It's gonna open it in, in beaker But let's see if this works cross fingers guys cross fingers Yes, it worked we did it we launched, we launched it. We did it, guys. We launched a site on both uh, the traditional web and the uh, the DAT protocol web, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer web. So, I mean, I couldn't be any more prouder of us. I think we did an amazing job today. Um, and we did, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, so it's there, it's, it's, it's working. Um, now, uh, as you can see here, and again, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, uh, it, it show, it's showing the domain. It's not showing the long URL, uh, and it's showing me that again. I have I can configure my local path and everything, and it, everything's working. Everything's synchronized. Everything's you know, boom. It's just working. I can use the domain for either the DAT protocol or the HTTP protocol, um, which is pretty freaking awesome. And things and things are working. You see, my image is working. Links should work. Uh, let's click on my PGP key. Yeah, my PGP key is working there. It's it's serving up the traditional HTTP traffic. Um, yeah, so everything is working, guys. Everything is working. That's pretty freaking awesome. So now, you know, we have a site that is working both on the HTTP protocol and the DAT protocol. Isn't that freaking awesome? Um, and that again, it wasn't all that hard, was it? It just you know you just kind of had to do certain steps in a certain way. And once you get those steps working correctly, you know, you can have your site working on both the traditional web and the peer-to-peer -peer web. And I, don't know, I, I, think, I think it's really, really cool. I think it's something that a lot of us uh, should at least try out, you know, um, not just, just so that, I, you know, if you try it out, just so that you can say that you did it, right? <laughs> so that you can at least say, hey, I was able to do that. Like, you can tell people, Hey, do you have your site on the decentralized web? Because I do. You can just go to debt, you know, com, and, you know, you can go visit my site on the decentralized web. And so, you know, that's just something really nerdy and dorky you can do. You can tell people you have that. And, yeah, so that that's that's the idea. Like, this site currently right now, the one we're viewing on the Beaker browser, is being hosted via my computer and Hashbase. Those are the two peers that I currently have this site. And there is no central server somewhere, so... If Hashbase goes down, my computer still is hosting the file. If my computer goes down, Hashbase uh, is still hosting the files. And I can have other peers too. Um, I not necessarily have to have uh, Hashbase and myself hosting the site. Um, I can have you know a bunch of you guys. If you guys go to my site, you can actually download the the you know this version of it, and you can host it for me. So I can get a bunch of friends or a bunch of colleagues together and be like, hey. I'll host your site if you host my site. So that's kind of like, again, if you have a home server somewhere, you can do that, right? So you can host each, each other's stuff. Um, so yeah, like that, I mean, I think that's pretty cool. And it's all possible because of the DAT protocol, uh, Beaker browser, um, DNS, and all these you know different types of little things. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple.